So it, Libby is the more user-friendly version of OverDrive. Um, it makes it easy to see all of the items that you have checked out from all of the libraries. So you can have uh, multiple library cards connected to Libby. And in Libby, it is a lot easier to see all of the books that you have checked out from everything. Um, it works pretty much the exact same as a physical library. It's just all online. So what, what I mean by that is we purchase a specific number of copies of each book. And when those copies are checked out, you have to be put on hold for them. There are a handful of um, items that are available for simultaneous use, which just means anybody can be reading them at any time, but it's a very small portion of the collection. Most of the time you're gonna have to wait if something's checked out. Libby is totally free to use. Um, you do have to have a library card to do it and you do have to download the free app in order to access it. So the app itself, is called Libby by Overdrive. It's this little purple icon with a girl's head in a book. Um, I'm gonna walk through the steps of creating an account um, and then I'll kind of show you what that looks like since I already have it downloaded to my device. So in the app store on your device, you're gonna search for Libby, L-I-B-B-Y by Overdrive. Um, when you download the app, it should be totally free. Don't download an app that costs anything. Um, you'll be able to open it. So when you open the app for the first time, um, it will ask you, um, do you have a library card? So we're going to say yes. So we would tap on yes. And then it's going to ask you a couple other questions. If you have, um, like Norm, you were just talking about how you have an iPad and an iPhone. If you have Libby set up on another device, you don't have to redo everything. You can just get Libby to give you a code. You would just say copy from my other device. Otherwise, what you're going to do is say I'll search for a library. So this middle option. Once you have that in, you type in the name of the library. For us, you're gonna type in Bemis. Um, and then what will come up is Marmot Library Network. Um, from Marmot Library Network, you're just gonna tap right on this. And then it's gonna say, let's take a moment to sign into your Marmot Library Network account. Um, wherever you're signing on to Libby or Overdrive, uh, Bemis is considered all users, so this top option here. Um, CMC is Colorado Mountain College. Um, we partner with them as an organization, um, and they just have a special login. For us, we choose all users. Then it asks for your library card number. Type that in, no spaces, it should be 14 digits, and then you tap sign in. And once you've done that, it'll um, validate everything. It says you're signed in. Here's your library card. It does give you a little heads up. You can borrow five items and have 10 things on hold. And then you say next. And then you're taken to this screen here. So this is the home page of Libby. Um, what I love about Libby is this looks the same whether you're looking at it on an iPad, on an iPhone, on an Android, or even if you're accessing it from the computer. So it makes it very easy to navigate across different devices. Up at the very top of the screen, we have our search for a book. So this is our search. You can search by book, author, or series. Libby's head, this little icon in the top, is your menu button, um, which lets you switch libraries, change settings, and do a lot more. And we're gonna look at this in detail a little bit later. Your current library is pictured in this middle section. Um, so if you were looking at Denver Public or Douglas County, you would see their logo here. This is just a visual reminder of what library you're currently searching. Um, the colors will, will also change depending on the colors of that organization. This button that says preferences is our search settings. Um, you can choose the format you search by 
what language you're looking for, and so much more. Um, I'm going to skip down to the very bottom here where we have library. This is your main screen. If you're on any other page in Libby, um, tapping this button, this library button, will bring you back to this main page. So if you're kind of lost, you've tapped through a bunch of things, you don't know where you are, tap the word library and it brings you back to this home screen. This middle button, right now for me, it's just the purple Libby icon. Um, if you are reading a book in Libby, you'll see that last book you were reading in the circle here. So had I opened Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, I would see that book cover right in this circle. Tapping on it will take me back to the page that I was last reading on. Um, and then the button that says shelf um, takes you to your checked out items. So these are from all the items from all the libraries that you have attached to Libby. And we'll spend some time in there a little bit later. So you'll see up at the very top of my screen in this menu, I have a little five um, next to Libby's head. That's telling me that I have five notifications. Those notifications can be a lot of different things. Items that returned, items that, um, that are about to reach their due date, if I have holds ready to borrow, um, and if Libby has any suggestions for me. So I'd just like to point out that's what that little number is. Um, and then we have this main part of the screen here. This is just the categories. Um, so there's all kinds of different browse categories that you can browse for different books in. Right now we're featuring Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone because the publisher, Pottermore, um, has allowed all the libraries um, across the United States to offer it as simultaneous use. So you never have to wait for the duration of however long quarantine is gonna last. You don't have to wait for Harry Potter. It should be available for you. Um, down below that, we have our what's new, what's um, popular section. So if you just wanna know, all right, I wanna see the new, new books that Bemis has purchased, I can tap right here where it says new in books and see all of the new books that Bemis has added. Or if I prefer audiobooks, I can do it this way. Um, below that we have what's popular. These are probably things you're gonna have to go on hold for, but it's things that have a lot of checkouts in our catalog. Or if you just want to use something that's um, read something right now, you could check what's available um, in books and audiobooks. Um, and then as you scroll down, we have other different categories. We have um, all the Colorado authors. That's a really cool um, section, some just added titles. And then if you go towards the very bottom, you can search by genre. So if you are a thriller reader, you can tap right on thriller and see all 5,100 titles we have that are categorized as thriller. Um, I think this is a really fun way, if you don't quite know what you want to read, um, for you to be able to search um, and find something to read. <laughs> Otherwise, we can just conduct a search. Are there any questions about logging in or the home screen or anything I've talked about so far? No, no questions in chat. Perfect. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top of my screen. And I'm going to tap in this search for a book section. So you can conduct a quick basic search for title, author, or series. Um, you can start by just typing your search in at the bar at the top, or Libby saves your recent searches. So I can scroll through if I'm like, what was that book I was looking for? I can find it that way. Um, you can see I conduct a lot of searches on Libby because I love eBooks. Um, so I can search for anything. I'm going to search for a man called Ove. Um, and as I'm typing, it's pulling up suggestions. Um, so I don't have to necessarily know how to spell everything or type it all out. I can tap on my choice from that list. 
One of the cool things is that you can narrow your search results right from this results screen. So you'll notice up in this top purple pink section, we have some, some words with underlines. So I can narrow it down by these things. So if I am not looking for a regular book, I just want the audiobook. If I tap right here where it says one audiobook, I'm going to narrow my results down and only see that one audiobook. Um, this is especially useful when you're doing searches for, um, I always use Stephen King's It as an example, because when you search It, it's going to pull up every book that has It in the title. So I can narrow it down. I can say ebook, um, horror, things like that, and narrow it down. Um, if you change your mind, you don't actually want, there's a little X right there. If I tap on that, it um, pulls back up all of the search results. This is also really useful um, if you find yourself accidentally checking out the wrong format. Um, so then this way I can know for sure I'm only going to be looking at audiobooks instead of accidentally checking out the ebook. Uh, there is also a way to do an advanced search. So I'm going to tap back on this magnifying glass to get back to this search button. And then if I tap on more options, I can narrow it down by a lot. So here I could do it and then Stephen King. And then I can do my search that way. Um, we might not own it. Um, or if I was just looking for a specific genre, um, they call genre subjects, so I could narrow it down here. So there again, if I want fantasy, I can search for things that are available now in fantasy. And then it's going to show me 1700 books. So that more um, or that advanced advanced search is pretty useful. So one thing I do like to note, even if you have multiple libraries connected to Libby, when you're doing a search, it's only searching your currently selected library. So this library that we see right here, when I'm doing that search, it's only searching Bemis. Even if I have Douglas County connected, unless I choose Douglas County, it's not searching Douglas County. Um, if I wanted to do that, I would have to switch between but it does remember your search um, history as you switch between libraries. So I don't have to remember the title between, between libraries. I just have to remember to switch them. Are there any questions about searching? Nope, not yet. None in chat. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna go back to a man called Ove. So that way I can show you some item details. So when you want to see some more information, uh, maybe you're not quite sure you want to check this book out yet, um, you can tap on the cover of the book to see some more details. So this item page has a ton of information on it from how long your wait would be if you had to go on hold, a synopsis of the book, information about the author, and more. So this top part of the page always includes title, author, and cover of the book. If I scroll down a little bit, I can see place a hold. I can read a sample, so maybe I just want to see if I'm interested or I just need something to hold me over while I wait the three more days until my hold arrives. Um, and you're also able to tag an item. Um, and tagging just lets you categorize something, so you could add it to a want to read list if you wanted to. Below this, since I'm going to have to go on hold for this book, it tells me about how long I'm going to have to wait. This isn't entirely an accurate wait list. And the reason for that is Bemis ebook items always go to Bemis patrons first. So it works the same way as our physical library. We share our ebooks with libraries across the state. But if a Bemis patron is on hold for an item that Bemis bought, our patrons will get our books first. So right now, the wait, the wait time might be about six weeks. But if Bemis bought another copy, your weight could be cut in half. 
So just kind of keep that in mind. It'll also show your history. Um, so I was using this, um, I use this as an example in most of my classes. So I can see all the different times I've placed it on hold, checked it out, um, things like that. So if I'm trying to remember if I've read it before, if you've checked it out on Libby, it'll tell you if you've done it before. There's also a synopsis. Uh, and then some other really cool things. It does tell you um, if it's available in another format. So if you accidentally clicked on the audiobook and you scroll down, you can quickly get to the other format just by tapping on that right there. So this right here. And then there's also book information. Um, so this tells you how many copies we have of it. So we have seven copies of A Man Called Obey. Um, where it's supported. So if you read on a Kindle device, like a Kindle Paperwhite or something like that, you are going to want to check and make sure it is available on Kindle. Um, but if I'm just like, whoa, I really love Frederick Bachman as a writer, his name is bolded. So I can tap on that. And then now I can see all the other books that Frederick Bachman has, and I can place them all on hold or check them all out right from there. Um, one thing I think is really cool, if you're an audiobook person, you know how much a narrator means, um, and a good narrator can make or break a book. So if you really enjoyed the narrator, you can find other books that this, that narrator has done. So maybe you just really like the sound of their voice and you're interested in listening to more. So I can see what other books George Newbern has narrated. Are there any questions about the item page? None in chat. Perfect. <laughs> um, so if you wanted to check out the item, all you would have to do is tap on the word borrow. Um, I'm gonna actually go back to the search results page, um, just so I can kind of show you what they both look like. So if I know for sure Man Called Ove is what I want, I don't need to look into the item page at all. Right from this screen, I can place a hold or borrow the item. When you tap on those words, it's going to take you to the checkout screen. The default checkout for eBooks and e-audiobooks is three weeks, but if you're a really fast reader, um, and you don't want to have to remember to return things or do anything like that, you can change your checkout by tapping on where it says 21 days and change that there. Your books return automatically from Libby, so you never have to remember to return them. The only reason you would need to return something early is because you can only have five items checked out at once. So generally, I usually have a lot more than just one book checked out. Um, I usually have four or five. And so sometimes I'll change my checkout to be a little bit shorter since I'm a pretty fast reader. And then that way I don't have to remember after that seven days, it'll just automatically return for me. This tells you how many loans you have and how many holds. Um, so I'm still able to check this out because I have four checkouts left. If I was putting it on hold, I'd also still be able to put it on hold because I have nine holds left. When you're ready, you just tap the word borrow, or if you're placing a hold, you would tap place hold, and there it goes. So it'll tell you you've borrowed it for 21 days, and then you get these different choices. Um, it gives you the choice to open the book, keep browsing, or go back to shelf. So keep browsing takes you back to the search page or whatever page you were on when you checked the item out. Whereas go to shelf takes you back to your bookshelf. And that's what I'm gonna tap right now. Any questions about checking a book out? None in chat. Perfect. All right, so your bookshelf contains all of the items you've checked out from all the libraries that you have attached to the Libby app. So I'm gonna kind of explain the parts and pieces of this shelf page for you. So up at the top, we have all of our different shelves. So you can navigate between your loans and holds, 
as well as see any items that you've tagged. Um, when you tap into a shelf, so if I tap into loans, I am able to tap on the word loans and then I can change how it's sorted. So if I want to see um, by date added alphabetically, however it may be, or if I only want to see my audiobook loans, you can change all of that here. Um, it works the same for holds. And then tags, like I said, um, it's a way for you to categorize items. They use emojis as an example. Um, a lot of people use this as a, like creating a want to read list or a to read list. Um, I never use tags, but it is something that people can use. Um, I prefer to use the shelves themselves because otherwise everything is just sorted by um, overdrives like cutesy titles. So the wait is over, recent, time's running out, which it makes sense, but also I prefer to just be able to see everything the way I need to see it. Um, so I usually go to loans and look at it this way. Uh, next to each item that you have checked out, there's several different options. Um, so read or listen to the item. Let me scroll down a little bit more. So next to each book, you have the choice to open it. I have um, a Kindle Paperwhite, so usually I read on my Kindle. Um, so if I have an ebook, most of the time it's going to say read with Kindle instead of open. But if you choose to read in the Libby app, um, you can do that. So read with Kindle or open. Um, you also have your due date. So this one's due in two days. Um, this one I just checked out, so it's due in three weeks. Uh, at the top, you have your download circle. So this check mark means it's downloaded to my device. I can use it offline. I don't have to be connected to the internet in order to use it. Um, this one, because it's set as a Kindle book, I cannot download to my device. So I have this little I. Um, the manage loan options gives you the choices to return the book and do things like that. So when I tap on that, um, I can get back to that item page by tapping on the title. It tells me exactly when it's due, 1026 AM on June 3rd. One person's waiting for it, so maybe I should return it early. And you can only renew your books when you are two <laughs> away from the due date. Um, if somebody else is waiting for the book, I'm not going to be able to renew it. Um, it'll still let you try, um, but generally you are not able to renew an item when somebody has it on hold. Let me do it for this one. Um, so on a book, I have this option to read with, and I can choose Kindle or Libby. Um, and then I can also return it early, which I'm going to do. And then it just says you've returned it successfully. So I was able to return by tapping on manage loan and then return early. Are there any questions? I don't know. No questions in chat. Perfect. <laughs> so one of the great things about Libby is how easy they make it to read and listen to items in the app itself. So in order to open a book in Libby, you need to go to your shelf, which is where we are right now. Um, and then you need to tap where it has open audiobook or open book. I'm going to do book first, and then I'll go to audiobook to show you the different controls. So it'll tell you there's 2,469 locations. Um, this is not pages. It's not the page equivalent. Um, so that's important to remember. This book is not 2,000 pages long. Um, it's just like the ebook publishing um, options. 
So when I have this up, I have lots of different menu options. So I have back in this top corner, which will go back to that shelf screen or wherever I was before. Um, I can search, add a bookmark, and then this menu lets me access some of the reading controls. Um, so I can access chapters if I needed to switch to a chapter, um, if I wanted to look at my bookmarks or highlights, um, and if I wanted to change the font size, um, the background color, things like that. So you can see on my screen, I have accessibility sizes turned on because I like my um, ebook font size to be really, really big, mostly because I don't like wearing my glasses in bed. Um, so I have accessibility sizes turned on. And then this is just a slider that I can adjust. And you can see the preview above as to what your text is going to look like. Um, then we have your color options. So if white text on back background, black background is easier, you can change that. Um, as well as an option to change the font. I just have mine set to this publisher's default, but one of the cool fonts they have is this Open Dyslexic. Um, and it's a font that's specifically designed to be easier to read for people with dyslexia. It weights the letters a little bit differently. Um, and so this is a really great option. Um, if I tap in the middle of the screen, it'll hide or bring up the menu. And then I can just swipe right to left to navigate the different pages. Um, if I close out of this, it will remember that page. So down here I have my Sharks in the Time of the Saviors. I tap on that, it brings me right back to the page that I um, If I just want to skip to a specific page, there is a slider along the bottom that I can use to just skip. Um, so that way you can go and then it does remember where you were. So then I can get back to where I was. Um, so just a like fun, cool thing that they have when you tap on the book cover when you're in the book itself. You can see um, how long you've spent reading and about how long it'll think to take you. It'll take you to read it. So I'm 1% through, so it'll probably take me 18 years because I have not been reading. Then it also gives you the synopsis of the book. Um, so this one's kind of fun. Um, I always like to look at it right when I open it to see how long it thinks it'll take me. Are there any questions about reading an ebook? No. Nope. Nope. None in chat. Um, so audiobook, there's some controls in there that I learned about that I am very, very excited about. So you have your normal play pause, so I can play it or pause it right there in the middle. There's also a slider so I can I can skip. Um, but then up along the top, we have some more options here. So this little um, timer icon is how fast your narrator is reading. One is just the default. It's just their normal talking pace. The moon is your sleep timer. Um, if you just tap it, it will automatically um, change. It should Usually the default is 30 minutes. Mine is set to six right now. But if you tap and hold, you can choose exactly when you want it. So I can set it for two hours, um, or I can just do it till the end of the chapter, or if I know I generally fall asleep in 20 minutes while listening to my audiobook, I could set it for 15. You can do the same for the narrator too. Um, so generally when you tap, it changes by increments of 0.25. So I tap and it changes to 1.25, 1.5, etc. But if you tap and hold, you can pick exactly the speed you need. And I found that 1.15 is the perfect speed for me. Um, so that tap and then drag down is one of the coolest features I have found. 
You also have the option to add a bookmark. So if you wanted to remember a specific point in the book, I can just tap on that and it adds a bookmark and you can add a note to your bookmark if you wanted to remember why you had marked it. Um, your menu doesn't have as many options as in the reading, but I can skip right to chapters, view my bookmarks, or read some tips, tips and tricks from Libby itself. You can also return right from here. Um, so both will tell you just about how much you have left. So for audiobooks, it tells you in time. Um, I have nine hours left in this book. Um, and then in ebooks, let's see if I can find my book again. Um, I can say, so it'll tell me 1%. I'm tapping on this to change those. So 38 is about the minutes left in the chapter, or I can just choose my percentage. Um, I do like to point out with both of those that time remaining, um, there's probably back matter at the end of the book. Sometimes books finish at 95% instead of 100%. So just because it says nine hours, nine minutes, you might only have eight hours, 50 minutes. So just kind of keep that in mind. Any questions about reading or listening to books in Libby? No questions in chat. All right. Let's see. Um, so like I was saying before, Libby automatically returns items on their due dates. So you never have to worry about returning an item on, on time. You're never going to get fines from an ebook. You're never going to get anything like that. Um, but if you're like me and you generally have four or five books checked out, you may want to return something a little bit early. So like I was saying, to get to that, you tap on manage loan and then you just say return early. And then it returns and then you are immediately able to check out another book. You don't have to wait. You don't have to do anything else. Right now I can check something else out. Um, one thing I do want to point out is that um, Overdrive has recently changed how they handle holds. So it used to be holds checked out to you as soon as they became available to you. Now what it is, is you receive a notification um, either by email or within the app itself that says you have an item that's ready to borrow. If you don't borrow it within three days of that notification, it moves on to the next person in line, you're bumped to number two, and then next, when they return it, it comes back to you. So you can get to those notifications by tapping on Libby's head, and it says your hold is ready to borrow. Then I actually have to tap the word borrow, and then borrow it. This was an update I wasn't super stoked on um, because I always forget to check to see if my holds are ready to borrow and I usually delete all the emails. Um, but it does tell you it's ready and it does tell you if your hold is lapsed. So this one, I let it pass and it says your hold lapsed. We'll try to deliver it again later. Um, and I can choose if I want if I need it to be much later or something like that, I can slide this and change that. And then I can just say update hold. When you get a notification in your email, this is what it looks like. It says action required. Um, and for BMIS, it will say Marmot Library Network, digital hold available to borrow. Um, and it tells you what it is and then how to get to it. Um, so once I get that, whoops, then I should be able to go to my shelf, see that notification. Um, if you don't see the notification anymore, you can go to your holds and it'll be at the top. So this is that one that I just got that notification for. If I need it a little bit later, I can say deliver later, deliver it to me after a week, update that hold, 
And then now it'll tell me again in a week um, that it's ready for me. Are there any questions about this new holds method? No. None in chat. Perfect. So the last thing that we're gonna look at today is settings and preferences. Um, so to get to this, excuse me, these, you're gonna tap on Libby's head in this top right hand corner. Um, when you tap here, you're gonna see lots of different things. This menu has all kinds of different parts to it. So like I was showing you before, this is where your notifications show up. Um, they can be all kinds of different things. I don't have any notifications right now, so it's just telling me where I'm at. Um, below that, you have your libraries. So like I said, I have Bemis, I have Boulder, Denver, Arapaho, and Douglas. I have them all connected to Overdrive. And all I have to do is tap on it, and then it switches to that library. Um, you can always tell where you are because that library is going to be underlined. So with color. So this color underline tells me I am at Marmot Library Network, and it's also telling me up at the top here. If you needed to add another library, so say you also had a basalt library card, you can say add a library and then go through the process for that library's information. Um, below that, we have our help and support section. So Learn Libby lets you watch videos, take little courses um, for how to do all of these different things. Um, so if you just wanna, if you're a constant learner, you can take these. Uh, take our survey, they're just asking for feedback. That won't always be there. They're just currently doing a survey. Uh, read books with lets you edit your reading preference. So if you do prefer to read on a Kindle device, you can change that here. Um, and then get some help has lots of different things in here. So you can contact them with a problem, a question or an idea. Um, you can get their troubleshooting help, things like that. But if you tap on troubleshooting, this is where you can manage your hold notices. And from here, this is where I can set what my email is. So I can set what email receives those hold notifications. So again, I got that by tapping on manage hold notices. Um, and then you can also set your search preferences. So I'm back on this main screen, and then here we have this preferences button. This is really useful. If you know you are never gonna listen to an audiobook, you can change this to only show books, which means it's going to apply to everything you see on Libby. You will only ever see books. You're never gonna see an audiobook. Um, so that's a really easy way to change that if you find yourself checking out the wrong format continuously. Um, if I wanna make sure that it is Kindle um, accessible, I can do that. Um, I don't mind reading on the Libby app, so I don't usually set mine. Um, I usually leave it on Libby, just so that way it'll show me everything. Um, change whatever preferences you want, and then once you're done, you can just say apply preferences and it saves that and then going forward, all of your um, choices will be, will be set to that. Are there any other questions? Nope. None in chat. Nope. Perfect. Good to get a card. Um, so the last thing I wanna show you is how to send an item to a Kindle reader just so you can see what that looks like. So since I have my, my reading preference set to Kindle, I am able to say, just read with Kindle. I tap on that. It takes me to amazon.com. Um, if you have not done this before, it'll ask you to log into your Amazon account. So you'll have to enter your email address and password. 
And you want to make sure that the email address and password you enter is the one that's associated with your Kindle device. So if somebody has gifted you a Kindle, you want to make sure that you're logging in to the correct account. But once you have that, you just say get library book. And then it's there. Um, if you're on a Kindle Paperwhite or a um, Fire tablet, you'll have to sync your device. Um, there's also the Kindle Reader app right there, and you can open it that way. I do like to point out, um, you are never going to have to pay for a book, even if you send it to your Kindle. So sometimes there's a glitch when you click on that Read with Kindle where it takes you to actually purchasing the ebook page close out of it and try again. Um, these books are free from the library, even if you're reading them with Amazon, so don't ever pay for it. Um, the great thing about both Kindle Preference and Libby is that it's going to save your progress, your notes, and your bookmarks, um, even if you've returned the book and then checked it out again or even if it's from a different library. So you're never gonna lose access to anything that you've done within the book itself. And that is all I've got. Stop sharing. Let me share on this one. Um, are there any questions? about anything that I've gone over. No, no questions in chat. No. Perfect. Um, I will say we try really hard to purchase any ebook that our patrons want. We're not always able to. Sometimes publishers don't offer the book um, through Overdrive, um, just for whatever reason, or they only offer it in the audiobook format, not the ebook. Um, but there is a way for you to request titles. You just have to do it from the computer. So if you go to marmot.overdrive.com and then scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, there's a suggest a title for our Overdrive collection. Um, when you click into it, you can just fill this out um, and we receive a notification and we try, like I said, we try really hard to purchase what you guys want. Um, so please let us know if the book you're looking for is not available. All right, let me...